On the first day of the week at the early dawn, as the steam was rising off the streets to meet the mist, and everything was wet with dew, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee, whose hearts had been captured long ago by his healing touch, by his words that spoke good news into all the broken places in their lives and in their communities, by his sheer willingness to sit at table with them and share a meal. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee, who had followed him down the Mount of Olives and into Jerusalem, who had such hope only a week ago, and who saw that hope turned to dust and slipped through their fingers. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee, who watched in horror as it all unraveled, powerless to do anything to stop the inevitability of it all, who stayed at the foot of the cross even as their hearts broke, who gave witness to his death and watched as his body was taken down from the cross and followed that solemn procession so that they could see the tomb and exactly how his body was laid, who then went about preparing the spices and ointments necessary to anoint the dead with dignity. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee, who had loved him all along the way, they wanted to do this last act of love and gratitude for him and this first act of letting go and beginning to claim their grief and life without him. These women came to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. They came knowing what to do, knowing what to expect. It was awful. It hurt. But it was unknown. But nothing had prepared them for what they found. When they arrived, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. They couldn't even do the one thing that would help them move forward. Grave robbers, the powers that be. Someone had stolen his body and their hearts broke the rest of the way. Their grief had no task to do, no place to land. The text says that they were perplexed about this. Perplexed. When we hear the word perplexed, we think puzzled. The women were puzzled. But the Greek is much more raw than that. They were completely without resources to deal with this. They didn't know which way to turn. They were at a complete loss within themselves. They didn't know what to do or even how to decide the next step. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. The women knew how to move through the rituals of death, but nothing, nothing had prepared them for resurrection, for life. What has brought you here this morning? What has called you to this dawn? Have you come for the music? For the beauty? For the fellowship and food and Easter eggs? Have you come to pay your respects? Have you come because you, like those women, have followed Jesus all the way from Galilee and the journey has ended here? What has brought you here this morning? 
Is it because you are no stranger to death and broken hearts and losses that take your breath away? Is it because you are all too well acquainted with the ritual of preparing the ointments and spices to anoint the dead? Is it your longing deep, deep inside of you, your longing for the stone to be rolled away because you are weary of being sealed away in the tomb. Something has brought you here, no less than those women who had followed him all the way from Galilee. And you, like them, may be perplexed by the whole tale. You may feel at a loss you may not know what to do or even how to decide your next step. You may not even know how to seek the living. Broken hearts have such a hard time lifting their eyes to see. And yet, here stand two messengers in dazzling clothes right beside you, not above you, not below you, not in front of you, or behind you, but right beside you, asking you the question that always catches our heart. Why do you look for the living among the dead and telling us the news that takes our breath away? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Sin, brokenness, alienation, diabolical division, violence, bomb blast. These will always crucify love. And yet, and yet the Son of Man rises again. This love can't be sealed away. This life can't be contained. You will die a thousand times before you die, but a thousand times more, Jesus will come and take you by the hand and walk you into life again. Then those women remembered his words and all the fragments of their broken hearts and crushed spirits were knit back together. And they left the tomb and made their way to the eleven and all the rest. They told all that had happened to them. But to those listening, such good news seemed an idle tale. It was nonsense. It was absurd. It was incomprehensible and impossible. They didn't trust it. Is it easier to keep living among all that is dead in our lives, all that is worn out, all that is intractably broken? Is it easier to just stay numb than to dare to believe in resurrection? What would it look like for you to stop looking for the living among the dead? What ointments and spices would you need to leave behind? so you could dance down the path to others and proclaim the life that has quickened your heart this day? Are you prepared to have others tell you all this resurrection stuff is just an idle tale, a bunch of nonsense? Are you prepared to be dismissed out of hand? Are you prepared to let your heart leap as it so longs to leap. You came here today for a reason. You may not fully know what you were seeking when you came, and you may have come expecting one thing, but the stone is rolled away, and the seal on your tomb is broken, and the love and life that are calling you forward won't be dismissed as some idle tale. Resurrection is real, tangibly, objectively, undeniably, implausibly, wonderfully real. Your heart knows it. 
Your soul knows it. Your spirit rejoices at it. Your face can't stay bowed down. The mind wrestles with it, but it will have 50 days to catch up. So set your burial spices down. He is not here. He is risen. This love has indeed come again and called you back into life. Seek him. He won't be hard to find. Look. Listen. Touch. Catch the fragrance. Taste. Resurrection is everywhere. Just waiting for you to lift your eyes and see what your heart already knows.